Good morning, and let's stand together. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Resurrection Day. Coming out of the grave day. I'm glad to be alive in Him. Are you glad to be alive in Him? Let's give Him praise right now. Let's give Him a great praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I may believe God's a great God. A beautiful God. A loving God. A powerful God. That's why we're going to sing How Great Thou Art. An old, old hymn that has so much fullness of power and truth. Amen. Let's sing it right now. Amen. It seems my soul has Close your eyes and lift your head toward heaven. Sings my soul. take somebody by the hand if you don't mind and let's pray for just a moment Father in the name of Jesus thank you for filling this auditorium with your presence tap people on the shoulder touch people in their heart and like the two men that went to Emmaus their hearts burned within them burn in our heart God Help us to get past ourselves to experience you, your love, your grace, your strength, your mercy. You're a merciful God. Thank you for being so forgiving. We bless you. We honor you. Touch people. Fill with the Holy Ghost. Lead those to the water baptism. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. As it is our custom, we want to, hallelujah, take a few minutes, shake some hands around you, make some new friends, be friendly.
how beautiful is our God. Lord, it was your word. Lord, it was your power. Oh, how glorious are you, Lord? Lord, it was your power. Lord, it was the cross. Oh, that saved me. Oh, yes, that rescued me. Just one moment there, you set me free. With the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. house this morning. Give him the glory, give him the praise. Give him worship, give him worship. Give him worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad I came out on Sunday morning. And turn to the other person and say, I'm glad I parked in the parking lot, not in the overflow lot. I do want to thank all of our uh, people for doing that. We shuttled them back and forth, and I appreciate that very much. It's our desire, if you're a guest here today, it's our desire to totally accommodate you and, and allow you to have the privilege of being in the presence of the Lord. And uh, we want to allow Him to be made manifest today. And I believe He already is. How about you? Do you feel like you have felt the Lord today? Amen. Amen. My name is Pastor Sean, and I'm on pastoral staff here. And we're just thrilled and delighted to be able to be in our new home for the first Easter. This is our new home. Amen. And we're glad to be able to share it with you. That's why we're here. We want to be a blessing to you, love you, and encourage you. But the reason why we are here specifically this morning, not because... Not because it's one of the two services that we tend to go to during the year, Christmas and Easter. We don't really want that to be the reason. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's not the reason you're here, is it? Just because it's Easter. I mean, not just because it's Easter, right? I mean. But if you are here just because it's Easter, we're glad you're here. We're so glad that you're here that immediately after the service, out these center doors to the right is a guest reception area. If this is your first, second, third time being here in our facility, we want to welcome you. We want to meet you. We want to provide you information about who we are and how we can help facilitate the calling of God in your life and in your family's life. So please, there's refreshments and uh, just a great staff of people uh, to be able to answer any question you might have. You're not signing up for anything unless you want to. We're not selling you anything. We just want to love you and let you know how much we appreciate you. But we are here today because we are celebrating a moment. Over this weekend is the passion of Christ, his journey, the journey to the most important event that you and I will ever have the opportunity to appropriate in our life. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the pivotal moment for every human being. It is the entry, the doorway, it's the threshold that takes an individual from one side of life into another side of life but just the fact that it happened doesn't really do me any good unless I appropriate that event into my existence if I was drowning in the ocean and someone threw a life preserver to me provided it for me made it available to me it wouldn't do me any good unless I grabbed a hold of it and brought it into my existence the same is true with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He did it, and He did it for me, and He did it for you. But until I grab a hold of it, until I understand what the death means for me, until I understand what the burial process is for me, until I understand what the resurrection process is for me, then it's like the life preserver that's floating beside me. Great value, but of no use unless I get a hold of it. Today we're celebrating the fact that he is not in the tomb any longer. Today we're celebrating the fact that he's not dead. But I've got news for somebody. He's alive. And he is well. And I am glad to know that he's alive in me. I wonder if you could just give the Lord a hand praise and say thank you Jesus for being alive in my life.
sur les arbres, les a crown of thorns on his head Not a mumbling word And you say that I won't forget what you gave up for me Nails in his head Nails in his feet A crown of thorns on his head Not a mumbling word he's good just because he has peace that passes understanding just because as the Bible says his arm is not short his ear is not deaf just because all power in heaven is given unto him it means absolutely nothing if I don't take advantage of it it could be knocking on my door it could be passing by in front of me I could read about it, sing about it, talk about it, and be told about it. But until I open up to it, it means absolutely nothing. 
very fact that he did all of this and provides all of this and offers all of this goodness, mercy, grace, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness means absolutely nothing until I allow him to be the true king of my life. Until then, he is just there, just around, and I have to go through the same struggle day after day. You're about to meet a friend of mine, a friend of mine that I met 10 years ago. You're going to hear his story and his journey about how he and the Lord finally met. Chains, chains of my past, chains of my present, and chains of my intended future. The interesting thing is it wasn't always this way. These chains just don't appear overnight or in a day. When I was just a youth, I was raised in the spirit and the truth. Those were the times when I could be happy and truly free. Until my innocence was taken from me. Taken from me by a stranger who preyed upon the young and the weak at heart. He was a tool of the devil's plan where this captivity would start. Vengeance, hate, lust, addiction, and secrecy. These are the chains of my hypocrisy. Broken relationships, fear, despair, lack of trust and belief in God kept me in captivity snare. I believed for years the lies of the enemy when he would tell me, whisper in my ear, that I would never become what God had created me to be, robbing me of my destiny. These chains were here to remind me of the man I was and the man I always would be, a man who had forgotten to be free. Free from the chains, free from the shame of my past, free from the pain of my past, and free from these chains of my past. God, when I walked away from you so many years ago, I never considered the cost and how great it would be, the price of this captivity. But after years of regret and shame and chains all around, God, you allowed me to see something so profound. These chains that I allowed to capture me, to comfort me, and to keep me from being free, these were now the chains attached to my family. These chains are crafted in the very pit of hell to not only rob and destroy my family, in me. Devil, I listen to your words 
They were nothing more than lies and deceit, twisting my reality. And the reality is it was me, me robbing my family of their true destiny. Me robbing my family by my choices. My plea to God was, please God, at least save my family. They didn't deserve my captivity. But most of all, Lord, do not let them become like me. And God, your answer came in the most unusual place. On an air trans flight out of Texas, on a plane thousands of feet in the air, God, you manifested yourself there. You said, you called me by name. If you want to be free, then lift up both of your hands in complete surrender to me. But God, I'm not worthy. I don't deserve any of it. I chose my path. I made excuses. It couldn't be that easy. It couldn't be. And again he said, lift up your hands and I will set you free. But God, I'm on a plane. I've got a window seat. There's people, strangers all around me. Surely this is going to cause a scene. And with the environment we live in, God, they'll arrest me when we land on the ground. No matter what I would say, there was those chains again. Binding me. Keeping me from being free. And once again, you said, lift your hand to me and you will surely be free. So with complete trust in you, I began to lift up my hands and something happened. Because right then and there, my chains fell off and I was free. Free to be who you created me to be. As tears of joy and peace and freedom flowed down my face, I was free by your love, mercy, and grace. And it was an undeserved grace. But in that moment, I said, God, what about my family? What can I do? And he said, that price was paid on Calvary and the message rests with you. He said, you must go and gather all of your family together in one place and repent to them. I said, but God, that cuts me to my core. Tell me what should I repent for? He said, you must repent for failing to lead them to me and not teaching them about me, but leading them to your captivity. So I obeyed. I gathered all of my family together. And if none of you has ever repented to your children and your wife, you should try it. Because as they were in that room, I repented and asked for their forgiveness. Forgiveness for not being the father that I should be. Forgiveness for not being a true husband. And most importantly, forgiveness for leading them into captivity. That they forgave me. So after repenting, 
and with their forgiveness. God was true to his word. The same word that he's giving some of you right now. Because two weeks later, right here at CLC, at these very altars, my family became free. the chains and free of the past truly free because of the price paid at Calvary devil you were nothing but a liar your words were nothing but lies and deceit you did your best to destroy me and my family you worked hard to seal our fate but let me remind you of one thing. In Jesus' name, I remind you of your judgment date. Because who the Son has set free is free indeed. That's because Christ paid it at Calvary. And the best part, it's not what Christ did for me. He saved my family in spite of me. But if it ended there, it would just be about me. But this is about Calvary because Christ shed his blood. He died and rose again to show us grace and mercy so we all can be who he created us to be. And this message I understand it now that Christ did it just for me, but he did it for you and your family. There's some out here today, he is calling your name by name. Will you answer that call and be free of all of these chains because Christ wants to destroy them once and for all.
I'm so glad you did it for me Just for me You did it for me, yeah Thank you, Jesus in a way I wanted to point out to you in the guest reception we have this reference uh, page here that shows you so many different verses under different categories it's a great reference uh, a tool and I encourage you to pick one up they're free it's a part of what we're going to be giving you in the guest reception area also there's um, refreshments that we're also going to give you and I'm trying to figure out in 12 seconds how to put an hour and a half sermon into about 15 minutes and my brain is crunching even as we speak but uh, let's stand together in honor of the Word of God as we customarily do and again we appreciate so very much you being here and if you did not fill out a guest card and Sister Kitty are you somewhere is Kitty somewhere? Would somebody give her the message that we need people out there with cards? And uh, if you are a guest to us and have never filled one out, if you would please fill one out so we can tell you of things coming up, etc., etc., etc. All right, Isaiah, if you have a Bible, says this in verse 3 of chapter 53. This is a prophecy of the Old Testament and there was many 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 prophecies of the in the Old Testament speaking of Jesus in the New Testament many many references this is one of them the Bible says of Jesus that he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrow acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not. This speaks of Calvary, the rejection in Jerusalem, the pain, the sacrifice that he made. Continuing, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities, which is another word for sin. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. All, everybody say all. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. 
he was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears, dumb, so that he opened not his mouth. And I'm not sure exactly how this is going to flow, but our title today is Easter is about choices, choices. So Jesus, we thank you for your presence that's flowing in between these seats and up on the risers and touching people. Help them understand what they're feeling. Help them to know that you're tapping on their shoulders and calling them to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. These scriptures that I've shared with you are classical scriptures concerning what Easter was really about. He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. When it says he, was, he bore our griefs, our hurts, our wounds, what that means is that through his carrying those and being sacrificed for the sins of the world, and that means everybody in this room, that we don't have to have the grief and the sorrow that we can have a remedy for the struggles of life, the hurts, the weights, the betrayals, the wounds. And he took that and went to a, to a cross so that we could have an alternative by coming to him. He took it all on him so that we could find forgiveness and redemption. The problem is, in so many places, that people have thought that he did all that, so I'm, I guess, off the hook. But as I often say, we have a role to play in redemption. Jesus paid the price by taking on the sins of the world and being a sacrifice in our place. But it has no effect, as Pastor Sean said, unless we appropriate it to our lives. It's not automatic. Jesus said, and we'll see in a moment, that ye must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. When we say Jesus died for us, what does that actually mean? How does that play out? I'm saved. What does that mean? What that means is that God is a just God. And when we sin, there has to be judgment. And so, he didn't want to judge us. So, Jesus came to take the punishment for us so we wouldn't have to be judged. He bore our sorrows. He bore our griefs. He was smitten and beaten. And by his stripes, meaning the whippings on his back, were a part of the price to pay. A price had to be paid. But not just anyone could pay the price. Because all have sinned and come short of the mercy of God. And therefore, none of us could have done it for the world. Only a sinful sacrifice. And I, I wish I had the time to go into the Jewish history about how they sacrificed lambs and how that was a type of what was going to happen to the Lamb of God. And he became the sacrifice so that we could be free. But now we have to appropriate that. We appropriate it by being born again. We're told very clearly, Sheila, in chapter 3 of the book of John, that a man came to Jesus and was talking with him, a priest actually. His name was what? Nicodemus, thank you. My mind went blank. And Nicodemus asked him a question. Nicodemus 
saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus had just told him that we must be born again. He makes a rhetorical question. You mean we have to get back in somehow in our mother and be reborn? It was rhetorical. The answer, of course, was no. But there was clearly an experience Nicodemus was hearing about called born again. And then he gave us the interpretation of the parable. Jesus answered, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And this is where the appropriation comes in. That we must appropriate what Jesus did by being born again. The Bible tells us here that in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, we see it played out. When on the day of Pentecost, the first day of the birth of the church, when they received the Holy Ghost, they spoke in tongues for the first time. And Peter was asked by the people, what should we do? He was preaching to them and told them that they had killed God by the crucifixion. And they were smitten and convicted and concerned. And they asked, what shall we do? And Peter answered them by this new birth answer. And he said, then Peter said unto him, repent. That means turn around, change direction, change of mind, change of heart. Understanding there is a God that made this planet. There is a God that owns this planet. There is a God that owns you and I. And we were called to be holy before the Lord. But all we like sheep have gone astray and gone into our own way. And Jesus came and paid the price so every one of us could be set free from the power of sin. Sin has a grip on people, all of us. Sin has a grip. We can't overcome it. We keep doing the same things over and over again and getting the same results, and we don't find relief. And so he took on our sins as a sacrifice, as judgment, so that we wouldn't have to be judged. And he made us a plan, he gave us an escape, that we could escape from the power of sin and go to heaven rather than be stay in the power, excuse me, the power of God and not leaving us to the power of sin. Sin has power. And the new birth gives us an escape route, if you will, to get saved. That means saved from sin. I got saved from sin, not saved in sin, but saved from sin. And he gives us the power in the Holy Ghost to be able to live a righteous life. Amen. Therefore, the power of sin is broken like these chains were broken by the shed blood of Jesus Christ so that we could be free. How many in here have been made free by the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Next slide, please. Well, let me back up, please. I'm sorry. Peter said to them, repent. That means turn around and be baptized, every one of you. How? What does it say up on that screen? In the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost. Remember what I told you earlier, that we must be born of the water and of the Spirit. And we see it played out here, being baptized in water, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the birth of the water. And then being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the power of resurrection. You see, when Jesus came out of that grave in the resurrection, he was a dead body. And the Spirit of God came in and rushed into that body and quickened it or made it alive again. Amen. And that's exactly what can happen to every one of you this morning. If you will come hungry, if you will come repentant, God will come into your life and raise you up by the power of the Spirit and change your life. 
you'll have new joy, new peace, new happiness, and the power of God and the presence of God to walk with you for the rest of your life and then take you into the kingdom. You must be born again. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Born of the water, born of the spirit. Next slide, please. This is the first place where people receive the Holy Ghost in chapter two, or the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were filled with the Spirit. Maybe you've heard of the word, the word tongues and what that is. And God gives believers this gift of the Holy Ghost that's evidenced by speaking in a heavenly language. And God is empowering you to be filled with the Spirit. And that's exactly what happened on the day of Pentecost. Let's keep going. In Mark chapter 16, we just talked a little bit about the Spirit, about being filled with the Spirit. And Mark tells us that he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. He that believeth and is baptized. That's the water. We are, it's a part of the transition, it's a part of the appropriation of being baptized. First, we repent and turn around. Secondly, we be baptized in the name of Jesus. We have baptismal robes here today. We have towels for you. We have uh, other things that you need up there. And you can be baptized in the name of Jesus and identify yourself with Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. The death, the death is our death to the old life. That's the death. The burial is being baptized. We baptize by immersion just like the Bible teaches. And the burial of baptism and then the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the power of God that raises you up from the spiritual dead to spiritual life. That's what you're feeling here today. You're feeling spiritual life. Somebody just give God some praise right now. Hallelujah. And notice what he said in the next verse. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Jesus said that. He said that's how to be born again. Born of the water and born of the spirit. Next slide, please. In the last day, in the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. These people have been, and I'm winding up here. Uh, these people were fast, or feasting for seven days straight. And Jesus came and he said, if you're still thirsty, come to me. If any man thirst, let him come unto me. In other words, if you've tried everything else, and you've done this and you've done that and you did whatever the world said was a good thing to do and you're still, something is missing. It can't be filled with a new car. That emptiness cannot be filled with a new boyfriend. It can't be filled with marijuana, which by the way, I just read in Time Magazine, the marijuana that they're selling legally uh, in several states is actually not really marijuana and it's hurting and killing people. Marijuana is not gonna do the job to fill that emptiness. There's a God throne inside of you and the only thing that can come in there and fill that feeling of emptiness is the great spirit of God. God created that, he wants to live in you. He wants to live in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He that believeth on me shall, on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, out of his inner being, shall flow rivers of living water. When you come to Jesus and you are turning your heart, repentance, he said, if you'll believe, he'll come in and fill you with living water. That's what you're feeling here today. If you receive it today, you can walk out of here and you won't leave it behind you. You'll be taking it home with you in the car. You'll be taking it with you into your home. And it's not an it, it's a him. And his name is Jesus and he loves you and he wants to be your friend. He wants to be your friend. One more. I indeed baptize you with water under the repentance. This is John the Baptist. 
He that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. God, the word baptism literally means immersion. In other words, sprinkling is not a baptism. It's a few drops of water and that's all. The word baptism comes from a Greek word which is called or named baptiza, which means plunged or immersed. When people come to us wanting to get closer to God and they tell us that they've been sprinkled, we encourage them to be baptized because that's what the Bible says. That's the burial. The death is we leave the old life. The burial is baptism. And you don't take somebody to a, a cemetery and just sprinkle dirt on the ground. You dig a hole and you lay them down. Amen. And when we lay you down, you're going to come up in the resurrection of the power. Your whole life is going to be washed away. If you have, if you have guilt, hurts, wounds, shame, when you go down in the water in the name of Jesus, and we're told to do everything in the name of Jesus, Colossians 3.17, when you come up, it's going to be gone. You'd be washed away by the love of God. That's why he went to Calvary, so you wouldn't have to be judged. But you've got to appropriate it to you, to yourself. Is there anybody that could just raise your hand, take a little survey as I close out, and I'll close this just to make you think I really am going to close out. <laughs> that you've never had, and we don't want, just want a hand. We're not going to embarrass you or anything. I just would like to know, how many of you here today have never had this experience of speaking in tongues? If you've never had that experience, could you just wave your hand? Don't just put it up because it's hard to see. Okay, please wave it till I get it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back here? How about over here? Nobody over here? Nine? Ten? Thank you. Anybody else? Eleven? All right. How about here? Twelve? Thirteen? Please wave it because I can't see it otherwise. All right. Thirteen? Thank you. Fourteen? Thank you very much. Fourteen? Okay. How about here? Fifteen? Sixteen? Seventeen? Eighteen? Nineteen? Twenty? Twenty-one? Twenty-two? Twenty-three? Up, up here? In the cheap seats? Amen. Anybody up there? Never, could you do like this? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And back here, 21, 22, 23, 45, 6, 7, 2, 8, 9. All right. We'll call it 30. Amen. So we have 30 people, 31 people, amen, that have never had this infilling of the Spirit where God comes in and you begin to praise Him in this other tongues, which is a supernatural sign of receiving it. And you can have that joy and that peace and your sins washed away in the next few minutes.